Today I'm going to show you the process to how I created this shielded termination using the Tula's Shielded Keystone Jacks by True Cable. For this project I'm going to be using the following set of tools. I have a pair of parallel crimping pliers by True Cable, a pair of flush cutters, the cable stripper and cable cutter also from True Cable, and the True Cable Shielded Keystone Jacks, and these are toolless. Now, if you're wondering, I did pay for these all by myself. This is not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with True Cable. However, if the folks over at True Cable happen to see this video and want to sponsor me on this channel, I have no problem with that because I use their products on a daily basis. I use their tools. I use their jacks i use their cabling all the time so again folks over at true cable if you're watching this and you like the content that i put out and want to sponsor me let's talk let's get back to the actual termination all right so to get started i have a piece of cat 5e shielded cable here now if you're wondering why i'm using cat 5e i just completed a couple of termination jobs where in both cases they use cat 5e shielded so the process i'm going to show you in this video is pretty much the same for cat 6 it's just that there's one less step to do with cat 5e and you don't have to deal with cutting away the plastic spline so that's an advantage but the process overall if you just add the cutaway of the plastic spline if you're doing cat 6 is exactly the same so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our cable and i'm going to cut off about two and a half inches well not the whole cable but we're going to take the jacket off and you have to be really careful not to damage or remove the shield so with the stripping tool the blade has an adjustable knob at the top. So what you want to do is do a couple of practice cuts at first until you can get your blade adjusted. You don't want to go too deep because you don't want to cut away the actual shield. You need to leave the shield on the wire. However, if that does happen, sometimes the jackets aren't, depending on the brand of cable. Now, I didn't run this cable, so I'm not sure what brand it is, but sometimes the jacket is harder and sometimes it's softer so it all depends on the brand however what I like to do is once I have the blade set I like to give it like two turns and then if it's a more coarse cable it should pop and split you might have to work it a little now what I find is the true cable makes a nice clean cut on the jacket however if for some reason the jacket doesn't pop nicely and you end up removing the cable uh, the shield I'll show you exactly how I work around that it's not the greatest workaround but this one seems to be splitting pretty well so you just pull and I actually got lucky there you could see I still have the shield intact so that's a good thing so the next step is we're going to carefully peel back the shield. Again, you don't want to damage it. You don't want to remove it. You just want to peel it downward nice and gently. And then just get it wrapped around the jacket. Just like that. Then you're going to see that the shielded cable also has a drip wire. So we're going to take that drip wire and we're just going to wrap it around the shield. And the jacket just like that. Then if there's any additional waterproofing material or plastic, you can just cut that away with your nippers. just like that and now we're ready to put the toolless jack on so let's separate out our wires our pairs actually let me place that down like that 
Okay, and this is the True Cable shielded keystone jack. This is a Cat 5E jack. Now, when you open it up, you can see there's a plastic insert here. This is removable. You see that there, it comes out. And what you do is, probably can't see that, but the green pair and the blue pair, because I'm going to terminate with 568B, where I'm going to put the green pair and the blue pair in through the bottom, just like that. And I'm going to leave the brown pair and the orange pair up on the top, just like that. So once I have it in there, I'm going to borrow that piece of jacket that we cut away to use it to open up my pairs a little bit. I'm not going to open them up all the way because we want to leave them twisted at least a half inch to the punch down point. So we'll get the green pair untwisted to a point where we still have a good enough twist. Now I'm kind of holding the cable and the plastic insert in my hand like that. I still have a tw good twist there on the green and we're going to go white green and then green. So again, I still got a decent twist there. I still got a good twist. So we're going to go green, pull in, white, green, pull in, and I still got a good twist there. Now it's a little easier once you have some of the cables already pulled in. We're going to get the blue untwisted. Again, we want to leave at least a half inch twisted, if at all possible. So I'm going to get the blue pulled in there, and then the the white goes on the outside and we get that pulled in there and we still have a nice twist in there. Now it's a little harder sometimes to get the twist on the top pairs because of how the cable lays in here, but we're going to do our best to keep the twist less than a half inch or keep that half inch margin I should say so the way it's working out now we'll see we got we might have to go one more like that pull it in and then pull the white in here hopefully you're seeing this we'll get the white and the orange white orange and the orange done and again I'm going to be able to keep the twist here pretty well Let's get the orange in there and the white orange. It's a little tricky sometimes, when, especially when you have big fingers like me. All right, so now that we have our cables at least in the slots, and first thing you wanna do is before you cut anything away is check your pattern. Make sure you have your cables in the right place. So we do white, white, blue, blue, white, orange, orange, white, green, green, and white, brown, brown. So we're good to go. All right. So we have our cables in place on the plastic connector. We have our shield wrapped down. We have our drip wire wrapped around the top of the shield and the jacket. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our flush cutter and we're just going to make a nice clean flush cut on all the pairs just like that and now we'll take the jack and we're gonna place the cables facing down into the jack it only fits one way Make sure you have it in there pretty well. Now, these are toolless, and you technically can squeeze this shut 
However, I'm going to save my fingers because when you do a lot of these, your fingers start to get a little raw on the end. So that's where the parallel crimp crimping pliers come into place. You just take it, give it a little squeeze until you hear it, feel it click into place like that. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back and rip off. We don't need all that shielding. I'm going to leave just a little bit there. And just to make sure we have a good bonding, I'm going to take my flush cutters in the closed position and I'm just going to shove down the shielding down into the jack. And there you go. So that's a look at how I terminate my shielded cables using the Toolless Shielded Keystones. Let me know what you think about this process down in the comments below. I will put a link to all of the tools in the video description in case you're interested. Again, I have no problem endorsing True Cable. I use their products day in and day out. If you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.